All right. Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible, horrible things, brings it on back to us in a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And oh my. I'm, I'm going to. We have very low quotient of naked this week. Really? Really. Well, the other. You know, it's Labor Day. Everyone knows you can't wear naked after Labor Day. Oh, but the, the the quotient of the rest of it far and away makes up for it. Awesome. Far and away. Start off with, I swear to you, I am not making this up. This story to, comes from Cumming, Georgia. Oh. One of the most unfortunately named places in right. all of the world is it actually spelled that way oh it, it is. is it uh-huh. is in oh i didn't say that wow how do you live there how do you not move <sighs> a mother upset after her six-year-old boy found a pornographic drawing in on the inside of a used video game tracy turner said she brought bought the mario and sonic at the winter olympic games uh wii game used at a GameStop store in coming Turner said that when her son opened the game, he began yelling after he found sexual images on the inside cover. They say yelling. What I would, what I interpret this as is, oh my god, look, I got a penis! Look, mom, oh. penis! Yeah, I mean, I have a nephew who's six, and I don't think he would be yelling in that situation. I, I say he'd probably be, be pretty like, excited. Mommy, a picture here. Um... Turner said she had also had to explain the drawing to other parents because her son and several friends were for a play date who also saw the images. Why do you have to explain it? It's... Did you draw the penis? No! Then it's not your responsibility. Unless you yourself put pen to paper to create cock. It is not your... Resp- it's not your purview. Yeah. Um... Well, I mean, they should have checked the package. Yeah, I, I, just one more thing that GameStop needs to, uh, it's kind of, uh, Turner called GameStop to let them know what she had found inside the merchandise. She said an employee thanked her for calling and hung up. Ah. Nice. Excuse me, I found a penis on the inside of this video game. Oh, well, thank you for letting us know. Goodbye. Yeah. But it's not a thank you sort of situation. No, that's a oh, let's replace that for you. We're very sorry. Give you a give you a credit or something. You know, it's not. Oh, you found a penis. That's neat. Call me when you find money in one of those or something. That'd be cool too. I'd like to hear about <laughs> that. It's not. It's not like you know. Just really, that's awesome. I didn't know you found that. That's that's kind of cool. <sighs> Let's move on. Okay, this is from uh, Northwest Indiana. And, um... Oh, dear. Sword-wielding man arrested on interstate. I'm, quote, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Really? Authorities in Northwest Indiana on Sunday safely disarmed a samurai sword-wielding man after they found him walking along Interstate 65 near Merrillville. The still unidentified man discovered wandering along the interstate just south of Highway 30, marching like a drum major while holding the 35-inch sword. The shirtless man, who appeared to be in his mid to late 40s, moved the sword rhythmically like a baton until Master Trooper Rick Hudson approached... Official, you have a baton. Yes, exactly. It's a fucking baton. Come on now. Uh, the man swung defensively at the trooper, but dropped the sword when Hudson ordered him to. Um, once in custody, the man gave authorities different name and addresses, but told Lake County jail officials that he was, quote, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Though his identity, identity hasn't been verified, authorities say the man was, uh, was charged with attempted carjacking, Resisting law enforcement and possession of marijuana. No. Marijuana does not do this. Uh-huh. No. It does not. I'm sorry. I have seen people stoned out of their mind. If they had a sword, 
they wouldn't go about, you know, with, they would sit there and laugh at it for three hours. Maybe try to eat it. Maybe. But they would mostly just... <laughs> it's a fucking sword. Oh my god, it's a real fucking... It's a fucking I know, sword. I know that your audience oh. has a lot of, like, sci-fi genre nerds, which means that a lot of your audience possesses bladed weapons. Mm. Because those things tend to cross. Yes. Let me just say to you all now, keep that shit at home. I is it doesn't go out with you. That doesn't walk around with you. That's not mace that you can carry around in case someone tries to rape you. That's not acceptable. Hang it on the wall and leave it at home. I, I just I love that he just came out, you know what? I'm cuckoo for cocoa puffs. I love that. That's brilliant. Because you know that you could write that in the fucking arrest report. That has been At least he's aware. Yeah, you know what? I'm fucking nuts. I'll just be upfront about this. But one. then is he really crazy if he's lucid enough to know? I mean, we do this all the time with the Brad Pitt from Seven quote. Like <laughs> Do you know you're crazy? Do you actually know you're cuckoo for Cocoa Puff? Like I I mean, I don't know. You sit around going, just, wow, I am fucking nuts. You know what? That's true. Someone, who was it that pointed out? Benjamin, if you're going to be running around with a sword, you should at least have the decency to cut the fuck out of a pillar in a parking garage and shout one. There can be only one, yeah. I would love to see this man in a death match with Sonny, the, the, the Cocoa Puffs cuckoo. I would love to see that. He's a cartoon, honey. And yet, I would still love to see this hat, dude. He's not real. That can't happen. He he beheaded. And I don't medication. <laughs> he beheaded the cuckoo, and you took his power. And I'm the one that needs medication because I got excited over hippo cookies. I someone in the channel. Crazy now, bitch. So, someone in the channel pointed out, "Your this is a good legal argument." Your Honor, my client would like to say he, that he is cuckoo for cocoa puffs going for the insanity defense you know if if you're just if that's if that's the statement you make to the court you know all right what else do we have um wow guess what this guy got his mom for mother's day flowers Boot to the head Heath Naples man knocks out mom after she complained of his martial arts. And this is, I think, East Naples. I believe this is Florida. Not sure, but yes, it's Florida. An East Naples man is accused of knocking his mother unconscious after she became angry with him for practicing martial arts in the house. Corey William Morrill, 27, was arrested Friday. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be laughing, but god damn, all I can hear in my head is boot to the head. According to a sheriff's department office report, deputies were dispatched to Morrill's home, reference to a woman who was kicked in the head and was knocked unconscious for five minutes. When deputies arrived, they said Morrill's mother was unable to recall what happened and appeared disoriented and nervous. She yelled several times at Morrill, asking him what happened. Morrill told deputies that while practicing martial arts in the living room, he accidentally kicked a wall, causing a scuff mark. He said his mother became angry with him and yelling profanity. It is unclear what happened next due to redacted information regarding Morrill kicking his mother in the head. However, Morrill said he called 911 when she became unconscious. Oh, what a nice boy. What? Well, yeah, he's a nice boy for yelling, you, you knocked your mother out! Fuck you, dude! Okay. I think you should probably start looking for your own apartment. Mama said knock you out. Not knock mama out. <laughs> you got the song wrong. You got the song wrong. I just... <sighs> He's, I mean, uh, wow. I don't care how big you get. You never, ever raise your hand to your mother. Or your foot, in this case. You scuffed her wall. That is your mama's wall. You that do woman, not. That woman pushed you out of an opening the size of a lemon when you were the size of a watermelon. She has suffered enough for you. 
Not t- too much. All there is to it. I and just because I started it. Vagina. Thank you. No, just I. I at what point was this like? You know what? Would be the best solution to this problem. I'm going to kick my mother in the head. How do you get there? How do you arrive at this as as conf- uh, conflict management? And How you know does- what always weirds me out? Like martial arts is supposed to teach you things like discipline and self control. And yes, control, and that it's not for violence. And why do we get so many? Like, why do you see so many people that take martial arts classes who are fucking psychos? Your teacher apparently sucks. It's not working. Cobra Kai, man. It's supposed to sweep the leg, but she's my mom. Douche. Sweep the leg, but she's my mom. Did you understand me? Sweep the leg. Yes, Sensei. (laughs) Right. Um. What line did I cross? Oh, this, this, this guy. Canada, you owe us an apology. Seriously. No, really. You owe us an apology. Derek, what did you do? Ottawa man faces charges after spray painting his name on the Grand Canyon. Oh. Oh, listen, Listen to this. Ottawa man is facing two charges after spray painting his name in red letters on the pro- on a prominent culturally significant often photographed rock face in the Grand Canyon. According to a United States District Court complaint, uh, the man admitted he had tossed the used can of spray paint on the can- into the Grand Canyon after a tour leader and other bystanders began yelling at him. Because of the uproar, Lucien Lionel Chernier uh, was only made it up to Lucy before he said he had, uh, though he said he had intended to write his full name. L- listen to this. The affidavit, affidavit added that Chernier told Robertson he chose the popular, the popular duck on a rock geological formation because, quote, it was so special. That if he left his name, then his kids would be able to see it 20 years from now. Several things. Several things. Thing. Okay. <clears throat> if you're gonna if you're gonna do graffiti, like I have a certain amount of respect for graffiti art. I'm, I, yeah, I like Banksy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Banksy's anonymous. Nobody knows who he is. You know why? Because that's illegal. Most most graffiti artists they have like their tag handle that's not the real name exactly. that they put on shit. You don't use your real name because that shit's illegal. And and what's for a couple things? Number one, that he thought they would leave it there for yeah. twenty years. Yeah. It's spray paint. It's like they'd not just be like, oh well. You didn't chisel that shit into the rock. They're no. not just gonna go. Well, fuck it. I'm just gonna. Even if they did leave it, fucking, there, there's this thing called natural erosion. And as wind and rain and and sun and time happen, because Set. I learned, I took earth science in eighth grade. That shit will wash off and erode away. Secondly, and if that's the thing, if that's the legacy you want to leave your children, you're a loser. Yeah, I mean, it's just the idea thing that you can say to your children. I did this. This is the mark I made on the world. You should probably give them to someone else. Look, kids, I defaced a national monument. Yeah. And and third, this man has kids. This this man. This man has children. He was dumb enough to believe this was a good idea. He was surprised when the tour leader and the park ranger start go- started saying, Hey, stop that shit! It's like, what? What did I do? What did I do? And, ah. Uh, why is it the people who really shouldn't have kids are always the ones who have kids? Let's not get into that argument here. Why does that happen? 
because that's a slippery slope to eugenics and we don't want to go there. I know, but it's always it's always seems like this is the guy who has the like 12 kids. That's why idiocracy is just a um you know, it's a future documentary. Uh well, I don't think the next guy is going to be having kids anytime soon. Though he is married. Uh-oh. And his wife has a career. Man sets fire because stripper wife didn't make enough money. Crown Point, Indiana, Merrillville man has been charged with allegedly setting fire to a Merrillville hotel room because he was upset his wife hadn't made more money at a strip club and then assaulting another woman who tried to intervene. Landre Robinson Jr. Wow, someone gave someone that name twice. <laughs> uh, of 28, has been charged with arson and battery at America's Best Value Inn. Uh, firefighters were called in about 10 a.m. and found heavy smoke coming from room 114, which had been rented by Robinson's wife the previous night. A woman who was in the room told police the night before the fire, Robinson left the room and was highly intoxicated. In return, several hours later, Robinson became upset with his wife because she did not bring home enough money the night before while working at Deja Vu in Hammond. While Robinson was fighting with another per person, the second, woman, yeah, the second woman in the room said she was struck in the left side of her face when she tried to intervene. She ran from the room to call 911. And a few minutes later, the housekeeper reported the fire. So many things wrong here. Where do we begin, Tara? Well. Oh, God. Oh. <laughs> I like that. Oh, God. Who the fuck this guy? Oh, get a fucking job, douchebag. I, th that's, Bitch that's a good. Have my money is a joke. That's a good starting point. Bitch bet. You are not a pimp, motherfucker. Mm -hmm. you, you really aren't. Because you just aren't. You re <sighs> Your wife did not make enough money at the strip club for your liking. How's about you attempt Yeah, how to about strip? you get on the fucking pole? There's yes. probably a Chippendale somewhere around. Oh, you know what? You're probably ugly. Sorry, that was a low blow. I shouldn't have said that. But still, you want more money coming in? You get on the fucking pole. Exactly. You you go and you shake your shake your your stuff, as it were. Go again. Yeah, you know, go 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 out there and. But not only that, you're in a hotel room. Your wife did not make enough money stripping, so the obvious solution to this problem is to set the place on fire. Which is gonna call, call, cost you more money. Exactly! It's not like, well, no one could catch not me like for this! Like, oh well, dude burned down the room, it happens, must be Tuesday. Like, they're gonna charge you for that! They get a little pissed when you set shit on fire! I know this from experience, don't ask me how. They get a little angry! Oh no, that sounds like a story we gotta hear. I used to be a smoker. Oh. Well, that's boring. I don't know. But still, they, they said, when you set shit on fire, the hotel people, they get a little... And this is just like a little cigarette burn in a pillow. They freak the fuck out. You set the whole room on fire, they might have a bigger issue with you that set shit. set hotel room on fire, you better motherfucking be a rock star. Like, you better be headlining with the stones or something. Yeah, I mean, it, it just... Yeah, I mean, when when a rock star shoots out a television set, he's normally got the money to pay for that shit. When yeah. you're complaining that your wife didn't make enough money at the strip club, maybe you, in terms of just your overall financial stability, perhaps you should not set fire to hotel rooms. Just saying. Speaking I'm of, I'm really disappointed, by the way, that I missed the stolen vagina from last week. I know it's still loose, though. I am so fucking sad that I missed that. The stolen vagina is still on the lamb. There have been no leads. Oh, wow. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Wichita, Kansas. Man calls 911, claims he was robbed 
by a prostitute. Uh, he said she didn't look like the woman in the ad. Wichita police arrested a man for hiring a prostitute after he called 911 claiming the call girl robbed him. Uh, yeah. Police say it happened at a motel in West Kellogg. The uh, 26-year-old man told officers he ordered an escort from an online classified website. When the woman arrived... Moron! Yeah. When the woman aw- arrived, he paid her the money, but then complained that she didn't look like the woman in the ad and asked for his money back. The woman told him there were no refunds and left. Man called the police. Police tell us that there was no robbery. The man was simply not satisfied with the call, call girl. Since the man admitted to trying to pay a woman for sex, officers booked him for hiring a prostitute. Okay, so you didn't notice she didn't look like the girl in the ad before you gave her the money? <laughs> or you noticed that and you gave her the money anyway? Was she wearing like a veil or yeah, some did she shit? Have, like a burka on that she then took off after you paid her? Because what? How does that? Yeah. The, I think we're we're quickly discovering exactly why this gentleman required a call girl in order to have the sex. <sighs> okay, here's your money. Hey, wait a second. <laughs> and to not understand that what he was doing was not yeah. legal. Right, to call the cops because your crime didn't turn out the way you hoped. See, here's the thing about a black market. Um, it's a, it's illegal. What you're doing is illegal. And if you get screwed over, tough shit, because what you're doing is illegal. They will arrest. How do you not know this? Have you never seen a... F- why do you think you had to do this shit online? Why didn't you think... that? Why do Dude, if prostitution were legal, that shit would be in Walmart. It would be right up front with the nail salon... And the optometrist, and there would be hookers right up there if that shit was legal. There are, yeah, there are nail salons at Walmart. There are nail salons and banks and and, uh, optometrists. I don't know if that that impresses me or offends me. (laughs) I'm going to have to think on that. But seriously, if if you could do that shit, they would, no, no, no. Of course, Walmart would have it, and then Target would immediately have one just to, they would have, Target would have the trendy upscale hookers. Yeah, they'd have like their, um, They'd have their hookers in designer capsule collections. There you go. <laughs> they'd have they'd have their they'd have the LA Confidential thing where their their prostitutes kind of look like celebrities. Because you know that's what that's Target's thing is the designer cheap the cheaper designer lines. So oh, that, she, someone in the room said uh, Dollar Tree hooker store. I don't want to think about that one. Ooh. Oh. Oh. But Siri, you know, the very fact that when you're attempting to hire a prostitute, they ask, are you a cop? It's not because they really like cops. It's not because there's a discount for cops. It's because it's fucking illegal. I actually, this is the second time this has come up this week, and that's weird. (laughs) I dated a guy in college who got mugged by a hooker for his Big Mac extra value meal. My college was in a really ritzy neighborhood, but right on the border of, like, the Connecticut hood. And you had to pass through the hood to get to the ferry that all the Long Island kids took home. We always took a cab. It was like a $5 cab ride. And you didn't have to walk through the hood. Well, he didn't want to spend the 5 bucks like a moron, so he walked through the hood. And on the way, he went to McDonald's and got himself a Big Mac extra value meal. And a hooker hit him over the head and took his McDonald's. (laughs) Okay, I I like... All right. That five dollars could have gone to a cab ride. That's all I'm saying. You right. spent five dollars on a value meal and got nothing. All right, I'm, except I'm, a bump on the head from a hooker. I was about to say, how sure are we that the bump on the head part actually occurred? How sure are you? Are you sure? What are you inferring? That uh, that he attempted to. Uh, he tried to pay a hooker with a Big Mac extra value meal. <laughs> That's what I, you know. Um, you know. I'm I just saying. I don't think he was that gutsy because, <laughs> and here's where we find out exactly how much of a loser Tara is. I was Aww. dating him. He, he was dating me to try and get to my engaged roommate. And when we, when we 
found out and called him on it. He just never spoke to either of us again. Okay. So I don't think he was that ballsy, to be honest with you. To be like, hey, baby, I got a Big Mac. Let's do this thing. I don't... To all beef patty, special sauce, lettuce, cheese. Does that yeah, get you I, hot? I don't, I don't think he was... Some... That's swank, to be honest with you. Oh. I, I'm more apt to believe that a hooker hit him over the head and took his McDonald's. <laughs> That's kind of sad, actually. Thank you, aw, oh, Tara Dates douchebags. Thank you! I got a paper cut. You want to put some lemon juice in it? Jerks. We got one final one this week. Um, Lyndon uh, Bellingham Herald. Where does this come from? Why can't you ever say what part of the world? Bellingham, Washington. Thank you. I had to look at the weather thing to figure out where the fuck this was. All right. Linden man causes explosion after igniting gasoline soaked beehive. Oh. This, I feel like highlights. Remember those when you'd have highlights magazine? What's wrong with this picture? How, how many things can you find wrong? Yes, exactly. Or, you know, Goofus and Gallant. Gallant calls the exterminator to deal with the beehive. Goofus <laughs> douses that shit in gasoline and lights a match. <laughs> Whose approach was better? A Linden man dumped gasoline on a beehive that was in a tree and then ignited it Sunday night, causing an explosion in the a suburban. Tree? Yep. In the suburban neighborhood that could be seen a few hundred feet away. All right, pop quiz time. What are trees made of? Bread? No. Honey, oh. No. <laughs> the man lit the hive on fire about 8, 8 30 p.m. in retaliation for a bee sting. It's also not made of love or penis or metal. Jesus, people. I love, I love Jesus. this. And he, no, they're not made of Jesus. That's not what I mean. He lit the beehive on fire in retaliation for a bee sting one of his friends got earlier in the day. You know what? I'm not gonna I'm not gonna judge on that because I am vengeful. Like, <laughs> like I have if I like if I bump into the wall and bruise my shoulder, I will punish the fuck out of that wall. <laughs> I feel the need to punish the inanimate object. I will throw shit at it, I will kick it, I will punish that wall for hurting me. And I know that's rational and I know it's a little crazy, but I do it. So I'm not gonna judge on the vengeance kick. I'm really not. Even though he, he got a gasoline, dumped it on a beehive, set it on fire, and the hive exploded. The fire caused a large whoosh, singed the tree pretty badly. Um, no damage except for a bunch of dead bees. What? He created a really inexpensive weapon of mass destruction. <laughs> Flaming bomb. bees. Flaming bomb. God, why wasn't why what didn't someone because Okay, in Japan, in Japan there are hornets that are like this fucking big. They have 3-inch hornets in Japan. You imagine you get one of those hives. <laughs> some kind of hive. You get a hive of 3-inch fucking battle hornets. You fill that shit with an incendiary. And you drop it on a bitch. They're not going to fuck with you again. But what what's really <laughs> what, what what's getting to me here is everything has a camera. Not the your flaming phone, bees, not the flaming bees. Your phone has a camera. Your 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 laptop has a camera. Fuck, your shoes have a camera, I bet. Why didn't someone videotape this? Because it sounds glorious. No matter how stupid this this act may be, come on. This is 5 million hits on YouTube. No damage like that. for a bunch of dead bees. The correct way to do that is to call a beekeeper. <laughs> Firefighters explain that to the homeowner, but it doesn't appear he'll be cited. Well, lucky him. I, this wasn't about beekeeping. This was about flaming vengeance. Well, yes. And the bees didn't understand. They don't know any better. They're just bees. The bees have no idea why their home exploded. Yes, everybody. If you write fanfic about me with minotaurs or having a penis or any of that kind of business, I will I will send you a goddamn flaming <laughs> horn hive. I will. I'll do it. You remember that. 
I just, that will happen. This sounds like one of the most fantastic things in the history of the universe, and we didn't get to see it. All right, I'm a little worried that you're going to do this. <laughs> oh, you know me so well. Hope, wherever you are, please call him when we go off the air and tell him not to do this. That you love him and you want him to be safe. That's why you said a really long fuse, though. <laughs> <laughs> honey, honey, no. Five million views on YouTube. Come on. No. It would be no. awesome. No. We don't want to have to make you a story on this segment. <laughs> All right. Speaking of, what did we learn tonight? What did By we the learn? way, can you post something for me? Can you show them? What? I have something awesome. Give me the link. This was twittered to me, and it's amazing. It's made of magic. Do you want? Do you want this? Oh yeah, the the hippo lantern Terra. Uh huh. I'll put it on the base screen. There's hippo lantern Terra fan art of you. And you know, I don't know if you guys have noticed. There's some. There's some uh, HLC nicknames. That's the hippo lantern core. Feel free to join if you like, if you would like to change your uh, your name. I retweeted the oath that Derek wrote for me this week. You should memorize it. Of naked men and states of fail, we know you to our hands your story sail. If you will, to cars and donkeys nail. Face fuchsia power, the hippo lanterns wail. We're going to make this thing happen. Anybody who writes comic books, anybody who does art, I want a fucking title. We make this thing happen. We could do a web comic of it. It'd be amazing. Yeah, you, you, you do that, sweetie. You, you, it's you. Be so sorry. Give it a couple months. You're gonna be so sorry. You let me do this bit. Because this thing's just gonna go off the rails, and you're gonna be like, "I made that monster." You chase that dream. So, what did we learn tonight? <laughs> we learned um, that everybody really missed disemb disembodied orgasm hippo, and that he can't get it up without an audience. We learned that hazelnut cream filled hippos are surprisingly tasty. We learned that bees plus fire equals awesome. No. We learned that you're gonna be dead this time next week because you think that. Everybody say goodbye to Nash. Um, He's gonna go in a ball of stupid. Uh, that if you want to leave your mark on the world, spray paint is not the optimal... No, that's not the legacy to leave your children. We learned that you don't pay the hooker until you've seen the goods. <laughs> and that if you don't like the goods, that's not a crime, but calling her was. <laughs> and you don't get to call, like, the Better Business Bureau on that shit. Imagine if there was such a thing. Like a better, better Hooker Bureau? Yeah, I know. Better Business Bureau for hookers or some shit. Imagine if that... And, uh, uh, also we, uh, we learned that if you are going to walk down the street with your shirt off and a giant sword marching, Even like a drum major, at least be honest enough to admit to the world. Yes, you are. In fact, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs that really there is like honor in that just leave the bladed weapons at home. If you want to collect them, that's fine. You should leave them at home. Do whatever you want to do them in the privacy of your own home. I don't judge. Whatever, whatever gets you off. But do it at home. With the windows closed. Not around school children. 